So a good question to have about conservation biology is what percentage of organisms are endangered, which unfortunately is unanswerable. Uh, we simply do not know how many species exist, and scientists have not studied every population in depth to know what species are declining. However, some specific taxa have had their populations evaluated, and organizations like the IUCN and NatureServe have sort of compiled all this information to give an idea of how endangered certain groups are. I was trying to figure out the best way to present this information, and I thought, hey, list videos are kind of popular, and in theory, list videos are a great educational tool, so this video will be a long numbered list where I go from the least endangered taxa to the most endangered. And I think you're going to be surprised by what organisms are the most endangered, so make sure to stay until the end. A few quick notes. So some of these groups have only been regionally sort of evaluated. NatureServe is only in the U.S. and the IUCN has sometimes only evaluated a continent or two. So I'll try to make sure that that's clear when I'm talking about a specific region versus the whole world. Some groups have had all the known species evaluated, while other groups have been sort of selected in such a way to give kind of a representative look at how endangered that group is. And a few groups I have included have only had sort of select smaller subgroups inside there evaluated, but I thought they were representative enough to give a kind of a, a peek at how endangered the overall group is. And, and I'll try to make that clear. I noticed I often use the terms endangered and threatened interchangeably in this video. They are not. Threatened species are any species considered vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered. So when I say endangered in this video, I generally meant to say threatened. Finally, we're in the middle of a biodiversity crisis that looks like it's going to become a mass extinction event, and so this list is probably already outdated. But it gives enough of an idea of how endangered certain groups are that you can kind of get sort of the gist of what species are at the greatest risk of extinction. I also have included extinct species. Extinct species have important data in terms of how threatened a particular group is to extinction, like how many have actually gone extinct. So those have been included as well, just so you know. Okay, let's start this. So of the world's cephalopods, 1.5% are threatened with extinction, which makes them one of the least endangered groups on the planet. There are, of course, a few that are endangered, like the nautilus species, which are all sort of overcollected for their shells and so are rather threatened, but as a whole the group is fairly adaptable to this new sort of human-dominated world. Cone snails, some of the most venomous animals on the planet, have around 7.5% of the species threatened with extinction. And this is, again, primarily due to shell collection, and that has endangered quite a few of these unique little species. So this is a larger group where only a few smaller groups have actually been sort of evaluated. But I thought the diversity that was represented was pretty good. So that sort of combined data shows about 8% of marine bony fish are endangered. That said, some of these smaller groups are particularly endangered, especially because of overfishing, such as groupers. While many other marine bony fish rival the cephalopods in terms of being pretty non-endangered. So if you've noticed a trend, the first three least endangered groups have all been marine creatures, and this is probably due to how vast the oceans are, as well as these species not having to deal with as much, you know, human development and habitat loss, and mainly just pressures from overfishing or pollution. But that said, as we go down this list, we will see some more ocean creatures that are far more endangered. Okay, here's our first terrestrial group. Only around 12% of snakes are endangered. Not much to say, but this indicates that snakes are fairly adaptable to sort of human disturbed habitats. Surprisingly, only around 14% of the birds in the world are threatened, which is primarily driven by the fact that many of them can fly, which allows them to move much further and faster. Of course, not all birds are as mobile or resilient, especially understory insectivorous tropical birds, which really need undisturbed habitat to continue their existence. And these birds seem to be some of the more threatened ones. 
That said, there are plenty of birds like vultures which can travel vast distances but are really susceptible to human-made chemicals which have made them very, very endangered. Did you know that 14% of damselflies and dragonflies are endangered? And there are roughly the same amount of dragonflies and damselflies as there are birds. So that means that there are roughly as many rare birds as there are rare odonates. Which is insane because I can name a whole list of endangered birds, and most people probably can think of a few, but can you think of an endangered dragonfly or damselfly? In the United States specifically, around 18% of damselflies and dragonflies are endangered, so that's a little above the average, and primarily this endangerment comes from pollution and changes to freshwater ecosystems, but dragonflies and damselflies are fairly mobile as adults, so they can kind of hop between streams, which is something we're going to see later on. Many freshwater species that don't have this mobility are far more endangered. 16% of ferns are threatened. This seems primarily driven by habitat loss, but also over collection of a few species. So monocots are a great plant family, including grass, orchids, bromeliads, and tulips. Around 17% are endangered, and this is primarily due again to habitat loss, but some species, like orchids, are overcollected for ornamental uses. Butterflies and moths, such beautiful insects. We do not know that much about how they're doing globally, but 19% of Lepidoptera species in the U.S. are threatened, and in Europe it's 16%. Habitat loss is the main threat, but some are heavily sought after by collectors, and this can also drive declines. So in the U.S., 19% of tiger beetles are threatened. I would say that this stems from the fact that there are a lot of tiger beetles endemic to very restricted geographical areas, and so in these tiny ranges, they're super threatened by habitat loss and habitat disturbance. Here in Utah, where I live, there is the coral pink sand dune tiger beetle, which is a critically endangered species that is only found on the coral pink sand dunes. And it is one of these beetles that is just heavily restricted. Here we go, some of the most famous endangered animals. Pandas, great apes, big cats, elephants, Though most of the 26% of threatened mammals are small, non-charismatic species endemic to very small areas. There are many reasons for mammals to be threatened, uh, primarily from habitat loss, but also over-collecting through sort of harvesting for food or traditional medicines, or as pets, but also accidental deaths, like with Sumatran rhinos, which get trapped in snares set for other species, but they get trapped and die in those snares as well. So, 28% of the world's freshwater shrimp are endangered. So freshwater only covers a very tiny fraction of the Earth's surface, and so a theme that we'll be seeing is that freshwater species are often more threatened because their habitat is more easily polluted or modified to a point where these native species can no longer use it. So here we go, ocean organisms that are not doing well. 30% of sharks and rays are threatened. These animals are heavily overfished, and for many species, like the oceanic white tip and hammerhead sharks specifically, they have declined by 90% over the last 30 years, and this has primarily been driven by the demand for shark fin soup. 30% of cacti are endangered. This is driven primarily by habitat loss, overgrazing, and of course, collection for ornamental cactus. Around 31% of freshwater crabs are threatened. Like with all these freshwater species, they're just small geographic range and inability to disperse makes them just more vulnerable to changes in their environment. Globally, around 31% of crayfish are threatened, but in the U.S. specifically, 51% of species are threatened with extinction. This will be another trend that we see with freshwater species is that in developed nations, they're more endangered than in less developed nations. This is due to just development, but also the U.S. has an insane amount of freshwater diversity. In fact, the eastern U.S. is one of the handful of freshwater hotspots for biodiversity, which is probably why so many crayfish are endangered in the United States. 33% of reforming corals are threatened with extinction. 
making them the most endangered group of ocean animals. This is due to a host of threats, such as warming temperatures and ocean acidification, both caused by increasing carbon dioxide emissions by humans. They are also super sensitive to pollutants. Pine trees and their relatives are the coniferous trees, and of them, around 34% are threatened with extinction. This is primarily due to deforestation and logging of these species, as well as the increased incidences of fire we are seeing around the world, which is really taking its toll on these plants. In the U.S., 37% of freshwater fish are threatened. In Africa, it's only around 27% of species. This difference indicates the real sort of strain that developed nations have on their freshwater ecosystems over less developed nations, but it is scary to see how many African fish species are already threatened. And to think about if African countries develop as carelessly as the U.S. did, what might result? 39% of the world's chameleons are threatened. A lot of this has to do with how deforested the island of Madagascar is, which is where the bulk of chameleon diversity is. Though overcollection for pets has taken its toll in both Madagascar and in other countries where chameleons exist. Amphibians have received a lot of conservation attention, as scientists noted a global amphibian decline, which has resulted in 41% of species being considered threatened. This is due to a host of issues, including pesticides, global warming, disease, and for some species, overcollection for the pet trade. In the U.S., 43% of insects in the order Plecoptera are threatened with extinction. Like with other endangered U.S. invertebrates, this is due to their high diversity within the country. They are also extremely intolerant of pollution and even sedimentation from vehicles going through creeks. And some species are threatened by climate change as they live in glacier-fed streams, which as the temperatures warm, will disappear. Of the 25 living crocodilians, 44% are threatened with extinction. Crocodiles are threatened by habitat loss, as well as overhunting and egg collection. Hunting for the hide of these animals in particular has led to some populations becoming extremely endangered. Turtles and tortoises appear to be the most threatened reptile group, with 61% of species threatened or already extinct. For animals like sea turtles, they're threatened by being bycatch, by, from overcollection, from coastal development, and plastic pollution. The main threat to the rest of turtles and tortoises is deforestation as well as overcollection, primarily for the turtle soup industry, especially in Southeast Asia where the bulk of endangered species are. Cycads, ancient plants that have existed from before the time of the dinosaurs. But despite surviving two mass extinction events, 63% of living species are threatened with extinction. Habitat loss seems to be the primary driver of this. Freshwater clams and mussels are some of the most endangered organisms on the planet. In the U.S., 69% of species are threatened. In Europe, it's 68%. In the general trend of developed nations having more threatened freshwater ecosystems. In Africa, it's only around 42% of species that are threatened, but that is still rather troubling and will likely continue to rise. This is probably due to the fact that freshwater bivalves are generally endemic to very small geographical areas, only a creek or two, and they're not particularly mobile. So magnolias, those trees with those big fancy blooms that appeared in the Cretaceous before the evolution of bees, survived an asteroid impact, now have the distinction of being perhaps the world's most threatened taxonomic group. It is estimated that 72% of the world's magnolias are threatened with extinction. This is mainly due to habitat destruction, but overcollection has taken its toll. So there you have it, 27 different taxa and the percentage of species within them that are threatened with extinction. Generally speaking, you will notice that freshwater species tend to be more endangered than terrestrial species, and marine species tend to be the least endangered, though with examples such as coral and sharks, that's not always the case. On this list, were there any taxa that surprised you? Tell me which ones down in the comments section below. This video is part of a Fundamentals of Conservation Biology series with a new episode coming out each and every month. So if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to this channel, and ring the notification bell so you can be reminded when the next episode in this series comes out.
Thank you for watching. Bye.